people don't realize that you know that you have the authority that you can come against these things too so i believe that part of my mission here on earth is to train and equip people and to help you to see yourself the way that God sees you and to give you the strategies that I believe that coming from the other side, I always say, I, I come from the other side, coming from the other side, understanding that area has helped me now uh, uh, to, to help people now with the strategies, with how the enemy works, uh, what is going on, what are the things that you can use against those, those, those things. But something that I have been repeating recently quite a lot is that the Lord has been telling me, you fight from victory, no for victory. So I want, I want to make that really clear to each one of you. Regardless of what you are going through, regardless of your situation, keep repeating and repeating, I am fighting from victory, no for victory. You already have the victory. And I'm just going to repeat that until you understand and until you realize that you have the victory through Jesus Christ. You are just reminding the enemy that he is defeated. You are just pushing back darkness and you are just reminding, I have the victory through Jesus Christ. So, um, as I was saying, I think I'm gonna be on the in, on this topic for probably two months because we have two weeks now, then we have the third one prophetic training, then we, we will start uh, probably with two more weeks. And I also want to give you guys, hopefully next month, a teaching on a spiritual weapons. What prophetic acts can you do? Uh, um, yeah, a strategies of a spiritual warfare weapons. But something important that we need to un understand is that the prophetic and witchcraft is only divided by a really th thin line. It's really easy for us to stop into witchcraft if it's not guided by the Holy Spirit. So every prophetic act, everything that we do has to be guided by the, by the Holy Spirit because He is our main source. Amen. So th this is something that I also want to make clear. It's not that we are going to start doing prophetic acts like crazy with with all the weapons that I'm going to tell you, but we are going to, of course, as the Holy Spirit and guide us, we are also going to be doing cleansing your house. Amen. We are going to be praying for your houses. We are going to be um, telling you guys how you remove objects, how you identify certain objects in your house. What do you have to do to close those portals? Because something really funny that I found is that people go through deliverance. So this is when I started to do the one-on-one -on -one deliverance sessions. They used to go through the deliverance process and then come back again, like with worse things. And the Lord told me, because even if they have gone through a process of deliverance, there are objects in their houses that are acting as open portals. And that's why the Holy Spirit told me, part of the process that you're gonna do with them is that do deliverance on them, but then make sure that you guide them into a process of cleansing their house, of removing their house from all of these things, then pray for the house, anoint the house, close those portals, and then all you have to do now is maintain your house cleanse in the spiritual and in the physical because also important the way you have your house is the way you have your mind my great grandmother used to say this to us all the time the way you have your house i mean in clean like how clean it is how tight it is that is how how your mind is and everything starts in here well it starts in the spirit but what is happening in here is a manifestation of what is happening in the spirit so if you have your house messy like untidy, dirty, you don't feel that you don't want to clean it, that it's all messy, there's something happening in the spirit. There's something happening in your mind. Amen? Because we are not called, like God is a God of order, of organization. So we also need to, you know, this will help you also to identify, oh, maybe I'm, you know, struggling in this, in this, in this area. Um, just realized my email went out just now. A little, a little bit late after 30 minutes that, that I send it. Um, so we are gonna be learning all of those things across these two months. If it's longer, we are we are we are just gonna do it longer. I wanna make sure that I take the appropriate time to teach you each one of those things: a spiritual warfare, a warfare, a spiritual weapons, um, cleansing your house, how to make anointed oil, how to consecrate anointed oil, a holy communion, all of those things. So that's gonna be a whole teaching that I will probably. Um, Go, going to be doing uh, next week. Another thing that, uh, sorry, let me turn this off. Another thing that I, I was um, sharing with someone, with someone that I had one-on-one uh, -on -one yesterday, that they were dealing with a lot of witchcraft, like crazy. 
one of, of, of the things that I also told them was that when you enter your house, make sure that you take your shoes off. Why? Because your house should be holy ground. It says that when Moses entered into the presence, into the holy ground, he removed his shoes. So some people, for example, if I'm praying, I, you know, one of Moses' representations, like one, his post, like the post, our po posture, I hope that's right, our posture when we worship is important. And I'm gonna tell you why, you know why? So this is what I learned coming from the occultism, that there are a lot of similarities with us being Christians. A lot of things that now that I'm Christian, I'm like, oh, um, okay, I'm gonna go through that, Sandra. I will go through that. So uh, one of the things that I realized is that, oh, wow, in the occultism, we used to do this. <gasps> and now Christians, they do this. And I and I, I started to see like a lot of similarities. And I'm like amazed. So one of the things that we see in the Bible is the posture. The way that we worship is important. Moses used to just lay down on the floor with no shoes. David used to just, you know, worship like crazy and he didn't even care. He even, it says that he used to even take his clothes. That's probably too much because I guess people you, used to see him naked. You see someone worship naked, like what do you think? Oh, this person is crazy. They used to say that he was crazy, but that was the way that he used to worship. So now in the occultism, I realized that for certain rituals that we used to do, the post, the posture, po, uh, that word, po, po, posture, posture, the po Okay, you know what I mean. The, the way that we were sitting matter. So if you were in a ritual, in a circle doing, you know, rituals, and you were with your hands like this, and you were with your, le with your, le with, with your legs crossed, they used to tell you when, when I was trained to be a witch, and I was like going to the rituals like that, sitting or with my legs crossed, the main one, the one that was training me, used to tell me, no, 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 make sure that your hands are like this, make sure that you know that your legs are like that, that you're straight, and that you have a right position, because uh, she used to say that the, that the energy flows, and that's also important for the spirits, for the demons, the way that you are positioning yourself. Now, I come to Christianity, and I saw a lot of Christians worshiping like this, <laughs> and a lot of Christians sitting on the chair like that. So it's important the way, even the way that you worship. We worship with our heart, we worship with everything, but that has to be a manifestation. It has to manifest outside. It has to manifest in you lifting your hands. It has to manifest in you laying down on the floor. There is a breakthrough there. It has to be reverence. If these people in the occultism like, have revelation on the posture in their bodies, you, you know, to welcome these demons, how many more know, more, more us, to welcome the Holy Spirit. So that's why position in church even is important. And with this, I go to the shoes, right? That we were talking about removing shoes. That Moses removed his shoes to when the Lord told him, you know, this is holy ground, make sure that you remove your shoes. And he worshiped bow down with his face on the floor like that, worshiping like that. Position, that is important. So your house should be holy ground. Also, in your shoes, you are walking in different places and you are bringing all that dirtiness to your house. You don't know what, what, what you are stepping into outside. Before, like, I used to be o OCD and I used to think that, you, you know, I never allow people to come in with shoes because, you know, I was a little bit OCD. But now I have the revelation, okay, now it's not OCD, but now it's like this is holy ground. You're not coming into my house with, with shoes. Leave all the dirtiness and also, uh, I, in the pe people, um, in the occultism and all of this, in the shoes you carry all the black, the, the, uh, uh, all the energies and all those things. This is why Jesus, when they used to go to a house, they used to wash their feet to remove all that dirtiness. So see, it's important to remove all of that from outside, all those things, cleanse feet. So that's why, important. I'm not telling you to do it, just as the Holy Spirit, but it's important that you start, you know, seeing your house as holy ground. Seeing yourself, yourself is the temple, but also your house, the way you have your house, the way that you know that you are cleaning your house, tidying your house, all of those things. My great grandmother used to say that in a mess there are demons. That she used to say that we, I, I was raised hearing her saying the way that you have your room, there's demons in there. Even my mom, then my mom now was repeating to me the way that you have your room, there are demons in there in all those clothes, tidy those things. So I, I was raised like that, and it's actually true. 
because it's the mental health that you don't feel like you don't want to clean, tidy, anyway, all of that. So we are going to be learning all of those things across um, these months and, and um, part of the topics also that we are going to be learning are going to be, um, I share you on Instagram, know how to know if you are under witchcraft attacks and I'm going to give you guys some, some you know, examples of, um, yeah, uh, uh, symptoms. So, or what happens when you are like under witchcraft attack. Also how to break generational witchcraft because even if you didn't practice witchcraft, this is what I come from with iniquities and you are new, please make sure that you go back to the other teachings and you catch up because it might be that certain things that I mentioned in here, you might not understand. So um, make, make, make sure that you uh, go back to the teachings on teachable, to the iniquities, to the soul. Where do demons come from? Because we are going to be talking tonight about uh, those things. Then we are going to yeah, learn to break generational witchcraft and contrary prayers and how to pray against those things. Um, identify the side effects of, of, of witchcraft. And then, as I said before, a spiritual weapons to keep you and your house pro protected. And this is where we go to um, to um, spiritual weapons and prophetic acts because prophetic acts are powerful. And if you didn't know, what witches and these people do are prophetic acts. They do all of these rituals like prophetic acts. They understand that by, by them doing certain things with plants, with things, they are releasing power and they know that. And we know in the Bible, a lot of Bible, even Jesus did a prophetic act with mud. And he put it in the eyes of the of the blind person. That was a prophetic act. So there is a lot of things that I believe that um, that we can use. But what happened is that the church are not using them because the church is too scared. The church is, is calling everything witchcraft. And now everything is witchcraft. And what happened is that, okay, you're calling the witchcraft. So keep sitting then, being binding and, and losing and defeated. It has worked for me and the fact that I'm here now, this is because the Lord has brought me to this place and the Lord has guided me to do certain things with my family, breaking iniquities, generational courses. And people say, oh, but that doesn't exist. Everything is done. And I'm like, okay, keep living in poverty, keep living in sickness, keep living in destruction while, while here I'm being restored and my family. So I believe that one of the reasons why people don't do any of these things is, is because they don't understand the spiritual warfare. They are too scared of using what it has been given to us. So, um, I, um, most of you um, came to my inner circle because of, of, um, of my testimony, um, but I wanted to start this actually talking about my testimony because I think is, um, because I think it's important. I don't want to go straight away to the theory, but I want to start with this tonight by showing you guys that, you, you know, from my own testimony, not just because I read it, right? Because of my own testimony that the spiritual realm is real. These things are real. And this is what happened, that people are blind. They can't see that there is a warfare and people don't realize like all of these things are actually real the spiritual realm is real demons are real no every no everything are demons i want you to make that clear because a lot of people are paranoid and they see demons everywhere and you know everything is witchcraft and everything no 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 we need to you, you know draw the line and understand that no everything is witchcraft no everything are demons but i still understanding that we are in a um in a spiritual warfare Oh, yes, on my testimony on Instagram. Okay, so, because a lot of people here came because of the um, testimonies. It's interesting. So I'm going to be sharing that tonight. But first, I just want, want us to, to pray for a minute and just, you know, allow the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Baraki andara brase la bra ando se que preende sereria andea la bra nescoria bro se prearia shakara ambrende se yando ara bra ande 
Thank you, Father. Father, we, we just want to give you thanks, Father, for this time. Father, thank you for the deliverance, Father, that you are bringing tonight, Father. And thank you because I declare right now that their eyes of their understanding, Father, are going to be open right now in Jesus' name. That, Father, those of them that have been blinded, Father, and confused by the enemy, Father, I just rebuke that and reverse that right now in Jesus' name. And thank you, Father for the power of the testimony thank you father because you have said that we have overcome father by the power of our testimony and the blood of jesus so thank you father for what i went through for what my family went through father because that has given us father a testimony that now we can use against the enemy so father thank you for the testimony father thank you for the blood and thank you father because the enemy is already defeated on the cross i just declare right now that the enemy is under the sole of our feet father destroy in that place, destroy in that place, and I just re re uh, remind him, Father, right now, you are destroyed, you don't have any legal right in the name of Jesus. And I bind the strongman, Father, over the airways in the name of Jesus, Father. I bind the gatekeeper, Father. I bind, Father, any reformers, Father. I shut down the second and the first realm, Father, with the blood of Jesus. I paralyze, Father, every demon, every infirmity, every suicide, every anxiety with the blood of Jesus right now. And I just declare, Father, that today we are standing in the third heaven with Jesus Christ. And thank you, Father, because from that place, Father, we take authority to take over the earth and over the ground. And thank you, Father, because you are preparing us for warfare. You are preparing us for warfare, Father. Right now, in Jesus' name, I break, Father, and dismantle, Father, every demonic assignment of the enemy everything father that has been stopping us father from coming to you from seeing ourselves the way that you see us father and i just ask you father in jesus name that you release those angels those warrior angels father with those swords of fire that are going to help us in this battle those angels that are going to father to bind to destroy father to dismantle father everything in our houses everything father in this region everything father in the place that we work in our children's school father right now that those angels father are dismantling and breaking every plan of the enemy and removing father those those demons that are there taking control. Thank you, Father. I just declare, Father, freedom tonight. I shut down, Father, the four corners of our neighborhood, of our, our houses, Father, with the blood of Jesus. Father, I cut the silver cord, Father, right now, of any witch or warlord, Father, trying to astro project into this house. I declare, Father, that this is holy ground. I declare, Father, that this is holy ground. I bind every spirit of confusion, every spirit of manipulation, every spirit of life, Father. I bind them, confuse them, and mute them right now in Jesus' name. And I just declare, Father, freedom tonight freedom right now in jesus name take your place holy spirit is all about you holy spirit <coughs> take control holy spirit we worship you in jesus name i pray amen thank you jesus Welcome to those of you that just joined join now. Um, as I was saying, we are ju I'm just going to share um, my testimony and everything that the Lord has done and everything that, you know, we went through as a family. And where I am right now is because of the mercy of God, of, of how good He is. And I know that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for God's mercy. Like every time that I remember, like, wow, this is where I come from, I kind of stop crying. And, you, and that, that's why like, I normally cry so much. <laughs> I, if you saw my commission in video, I couldn't stop crying. And people were asking about, why are you so excited? Why are you crying? And it's not that, you know, I was excited about, about the title, but I was excited about the fact that God decided to choose someone like me, a wreck like me. <laughs> my, my team now, <laughs> that word. That God decided to... Um, you, you, you know to to pick me to you know to save me to restore me so every time that i remember everything that i went through 
and now where the Lord has placed me for His mercy, for His grace, I couldn't be more grateful. And I always say, Father, I'm not going to have enough life to thank you. Even if I'm 100 years, 102, that's not going to be enough to thank you every single day for everything that you have done. For everything. And even if right now, you might not have things to be thankful for because you might be feeling in warfare, because you might be feeling... But start reminding and remembering where you come from and where you are right now. Because you are not in the place that you used to be before. You might not be in the place that you want to be, but you are not definitely where you used to be. Always think like that and give thanks to God and give thanks to God. Amen. So... Yeah, so we are just gonna, I'm just gonna share with you guys. Um, first of all, I, w- I wanna share something with you. The origin of witchcraft, because many people don't understand this. And there is a lot of, it might be division and people saying, no, that, that's, not, that's not true, blah, blah, blah. But this is the research. This is why it's important for us to research these things and to look for information and to read the Bible and, you know, go to history and, and you, you, like, look for information so you can understand this these things and I just want to start with with this like the origin the early origin of witchcraft we see in um in Joshua 310 Joshua 3 310 we see that the people of Israel right they they to for them to be able to go into Canaan into the promised place they have to face seven nations they have to face the Hittite Hivites Perizzites I hope I'm pronouncing this um, right Jirjas, Shites, Amorites, Jebusites. So they were the seven. Sorry, guys, I just murdered all these tribes. Um, all of these seven nations. So the people of Israel, you know, when God tells them, go to Canaan, I'm not going to give you the land, all out that I promise. And they have to face these seven tribes. They have to face these seven nations. And what happened is that this Canaan, first of all, right now is in Israel. So Canaan is the place of Israel, it's not Africa. Okay, so these seven tribes came from Canaan, from, from, from Israel, from that land that the people of Israel were trying to conquer. So each one of these seven tribes, they have their own God. So seven, each one of them had their own God. And what happened is that when the Israelites, when they conquer the land, when they conquer the region when these seven uh, nations were, what happened is that this nation have to cross to Africa and they expanded all to Africa and what happened is that idolatry also expanded and for those of you that are from from Nigeria from Africa you this might sound quite familiar this is why you find in Africa the seven African powers why they come from these seven nations from these uh, Hittites Hevites all of these tribes and these seven African powers that we see there are the Elewa, uh, Obatala, Ogun, Chango, Yemaya, Oshun, Oriminya. So these Orishas, so sorry, what happened was that um, when the, the Africans were taking slaves to different parts, witchcraft started to expand because they, these, uh, these people were following these gods, these following these seven gods. What happened was that, let's say, in South America and in Central America, uh, the Africans were taking slaves, and what happened was that the culture of South America, of my people with Central America, it mixed with these uh, seven tribes, with these seven gods. And this is why in Santeria, for those of you that don't know, Santeria is witchcraft, in Santeria they use the seven African powers. In Santeria, uh, we used to use Elewa, Obatala, Ogu, the, all of these ones. So this is why it came from these Orishas eh, eh, are the gods of, San, of Santeria. That then if you look behind, oh, these Orishas come from Africa. And then, oh, but then you look and then these seven, eh, these seven African powers, when you research, they actually come from the seven nations that the people of Israel were trying to destroy in Israel. So what happened was that it expanded all this witchcraft all through Europe, all of that. And in, in this is why, uh, the, so their culture meets with the other cultures, um, like in South, South, South America, Central America. And this is why we have Santeria, we have Voodoo, we have Macumba, we have Cambumble. So all of these are witchcraft that use 
these seven uh, African powers. Then we have the Venezuelan uh, three uh, powers. Uh, that that is the one that we mostly used to use for um, the Indian white white uh, white Caipudo. Uh, uh, Leon Sal, Negro Felipe, so all of these were principalities also that come from um, Africa, from Canaan, okay? So when I say that it comes from Africa, it doesn't come from Africa, it was established there, but it comes from Canaan, okay? So they have to depart when the people of God took Canaan and they moved to Africa and that's what it expanded to everywhere. Um, so this is where... <coughs> Witchcraft, and this is kind of like the origin of witchcraft and the origin of um, of all of these things come from, right? Uh, but you can do your own research, you can read about it, you can look for history, and you can, like, as I always say, like, make sure that you go and investigate yourself. Don't say 100% what I say, like, you are allowed to go and research, you are, you are allowed to go and, and do your own, um, you know, look for your own information if you don't believe. It's absolutely fine. You can go and do your own research. Okay, so saying that, um, I just want to then talk about my testimony. So I come from uh, five generations of witches. Um, I think I was probably the fourth of the... Uh, I think I was... I think I was the fourth. Um, then my great-grandmother and my great-great-great-grandmother. Um, or the fifth. Sorry, fifth. <laughs> I don't even know now. <laughs> so I come from like five generations of witches or so my mom my grandmother, my great-grandmother, and my great-great-grandmother. So what happened was that when I was born, my great-grandmother, she was already old. When I was born, my great-grandmother was uh, was almost 70. So she was the one that raised, obviously, my mom's mom. Then my mom's mom died when my mom was nine, so she had to look after my mom when she was nine. Then my mom had me when I was 19. And obviously now my great grandmother had to look after me so my mom could go to work. So I was kind of like raised by my great grandmother and then my mom until we go, we, we left to um, Spain when I was like six, seven. Um, so I was all my early days were with my great grandmother. So it's interesting because um, I always told my mom, like, you, you, you know, a lot of people that come from the occultism, they see their grandmother doing a lot of witchcraft um they 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 are raised seen doing all those things but what happened is that my mom my great grandmother obviously is my mom's mom so she my mom actually grew up looking my great grandmother doing all types of witchcraft but i believe that when i was born she was already old and she used to do things but not as intense as when uh, my mom was alive but what happened that my mom was trained by her. So now when I was born, my mom was doing all of these things. So I kind of like saw more my mom than my great grandmother doing these things. So I just want to make that clear uh, because my mom was, my great grandmother was like almost 70 and uh, she was raising me and all the children. So I used to see her doing things, but not as much as my mom. So my mom is the one that actually saw her doing all the stuff and that passed to her and now I saw my mom I was raised seeing my mom doing all these things and we used to do rituals with other witches and all of that stuff so um I just wanted to make that clear so what happened is that my great-grandmother she used to be a healer she used to do uh, exorcism she used to do abortion so she used to move like there are different types of witchcraft, like white witchcraft, blood witchcraft, green witchcraft, that are the ones that use um, herbs, so they are more like the, the, the shamans, the ones that use like herbs to cleanse people and do those things. Um, and then, uh, uh, so what happened is that she also used to be a medium, so people used to go to her uh, to speak with their relatives. So she used to be like the channel for these demons to come and she will like be possessed and other people will talk to their family members through her. And what happened is that, uh, so my great-grandmother used to do this. We recently found out that also my great-grandmother uh, used to do exorcism. So it was quite curious because the people used to go to her for exorcism. So it's quite curious that now my mom and me move in deliverance. 
it's kind of like similar. Exorcism are deliverance. So she used to do that. So she used to have the gift. And what happened is that many people don't understand. They say like, but why witches do healings and people get healed? Why they do um, exorcisms and those things um, and, and they are delivered? Like, why is that? So what happened is that, so this is how it works. Like witches that do healings, it, what it happens is that they can take away a certain problem. But what happened is that they might bring another one without the person knowing. For example, let, let, let's say that there is a woman that can't, that can't have kids. And I can like, I remember like, even like pastors like going and asking, now oh, I can't have kids. So, is, so imagine a person that can't, that can't have kids, right? What happens is that they go to the witch and the witch pray for the woman to have a child, right? And what happens is that the woman gets pregnant because the magic can't take away the woman not be able to have baby so because there are demons that are holding kind of like the womb for barrenness i think i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right so what happened is that through magic that they can remove those demons and what happened is that the woman have the baby and all of that stuff and then what happened is that the magic brings a sickness instead so what happened is that the person now has to continue to come back to the witch with more problems and looking for more solutions. So that's how actually witchcraft works. That you go thinking, I'm gonna go and get my healing. And what happened is that because they think about the money, this is why prophets, we need to be careful that we don't become like giving prophecies for money because this is what witches do, right? So, um, so that's what happened, that you go for healing, they might, you know, heal you because they remove that demon, but other things happen to you. Now is destruction. Now is your marriage. Now, so you can keep coming back. So that's kind of like manipulation and control. You are thinking that you are going to be set free, but you are not set free. And that's kind of like the way that um, um, that my great grandmother you you used to do. She never called herself a witch because, in fact, she was Catholic, and she used to read the Bible, and she used to have all her saints. And she used to do healings through one of the saints, uh, San Gregorio, that it was the, the, the saint of healing. So she used to do actually witchcraft and read the Bible. So this is why I said constantly, the witches know the Bible. Witches know that Psalm 91 and 23 are powerful. So that this is just so you guys um, like know the type of thing. So what happened is that... Um, yeah, um, so that's my great grandmother. She never called herself, I am a witch, I am a shaman. No, she never. She always kept like low profile, but the people in the village knew that, oh, I want to have an abortion. Oh, go to, uh, I, I don't want to name her. Um, go to her because, you, you know, she's going to give you herbs and she's going to help you to have an abortion. Oh, that I want to do healing. Go to her because, so they knew that, you, you know, that she carries something. And something important that I realized is that so this is how witchcraft works because I was talking to my mom and I was telling her why only both of us in the family are doing witchcraft like why like my aunts my mom's sisters why my you know my mom's aunts why they never got involved and the Holy Spirit told me because witchcraft right this were by covenants so they they were picking the first female of every generation so the first one was my great-grandmother then it was my mom's mom but she died when my mom was was nine so it happens to my mom and who was the firstborn me so now it was passing to me so it was passing to each one of us this is why my you know curandero yes that's that's how um they used to call it so this is why my mom's sisters they were never interested and they used to see my mom like doing all this stuff and they used to say why are you doing that Wait, don't waste your time my also my my mom's aunt so my mom's mom's sisters they never were interested so it was passing to the firstborn to the firstborn this is why in the bible the firstborn is always consecrated can you see it's consecrated for god but also is consecrated for the occultism. It's just amazing. So I want you guys to, to see how the enemy like works, how copies absolutely everything. So what happened is that, okay, I, I was born, um, my great-grandmother 
um, and started to look after me, to raise me. Obviously, she came from a lot of abuse, psychological abuse. She, she had to run when she was 15, leaving uh, three of her children, and they were trying to kill her, so she had to leave. The, these kids grow up thinking that my great-grandmother abandoned them, so that she grew up with a lot of pain, seeing her children behind. Her children, even until the day that she died, one of them came and like she never talked to these two two of them. They never lo loved her. So imagine as a mom growing up thinking, I have to run away because they were trying to kill me. They took my kids from me and my kids literally grow up hating me. So this is why how she raised, she was also abused, a lot of stuff, so a lot of things. that. So this is why she was never able to give me or my mom love because she was really strict, really hard, psychological abuse, calling names, physical abuse, even at a really young age. Like I suffered with a lot of abuse that for many years my brain blocked those memories because they were like so painful. And when I became Christian, like even two years ago, the Lord started to remind me those things and I was like God why are you re like reminding me th these things this is painful I thought that was the enemy and the Lord said no you need to remind because you need to heal you need to remember because you need to heal and it was such a painful painful process remembering you know when when you were just little and you cry and they used to put your head in in water for you to li literally choke so you stop crying or tight like putting you around with chains when you were only two, when you wanted to run away, or pushing you out of the stairs. So there was a lot of things that I block, that they started to manifest in my behavior, like anger, rage, and depression, anxiety, suicide, uh, social anxiety, not wanting to communicate. All of those things, those, those traumas started to manifest. This is why it's important to heal from childhood. This is why I put so much emphasis and also th th this is why I like psychology and emotions and how the mind works and how to bring healing to those areas because deliverance and psychology is linked. Is they, they, you, 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 you know, you try to heal the person, the emotions, the traumas and all of those things. So I was raised like, like, like that. So and also because my mom had to go to work, like I was with her, a lot of abuse, abandonment, rejection, so everything entered through there. And what happened is that I remember that um, one day my great grandmother took me to a place with a man, and it was it was like the house was dark, and they put me in a circle of fire, and they started to do I don't know if it was an in initiation. I believe so, and they were doing things there with me in the place. Nothing happens to me, but my spiritual senses. But they started to be like so activated when I was only two. And what happened is that my aunt, she was a Christian by then. Now she is a Jehovah's Witness, but she was the first Christian in the family. And she, I was only like really young, like three or four. And she used to take me by force to church. I mean, I used to lo love it. And what happened is that my great grandmother used to just argue with her, thinking you're just going to, like, obviously she didn't like it that she was taking me to church. And my aunt used to take me every Sunday. I remember going really young to Bible school with all the other children. So I believe that recently I just started to ask God why so many people you know die before their time and they say by why this person died and i say ask god why i didn't die i tried to commit suicide so many times i was in a hospital i had a lot of like accidents that could have killed me why i never die and i was there like you, you know because when you communicate with the holy spirit you ask but he replies back to you so i ask him the question and i as i sit and he started to speak to me and he told me because your aunt consecrated you when you were young like my my great grandmother was doing her things with me in the background but at the same time my aunt by she taking me to church to the altar she consecrated me this is why our children should they should they they should be raised in the altar you taking them to the altar if you're going to worship come with me worship even at home taking them as like they are, they, they, they have to grow up in the altar. And that's what the Holy Spirit told me. And I started to write all the more things that the Holy Spirit told me. And now I realize, and I started to cry like, wow, this is why some people, you know, die and they die in awful accidents and things because there is a legal right. But I believe that in my life, there was a consecration that it was made to darkness, but also to God. So there was a fight there. So since a really young age, 
it's like heaven and, and, and hell broke loose in my life. And I just started to experience a lot of spiritual encounters that nobody told me, nobody prepared me for, as I said. Like, um, it wasn't until I started to be like seven, eight that I started to see my mom doing things that I remember. Um, so I just remember being really young, like three or four, and having these crazy encounters. And one of them that you might have here is that that was like the first one that I'm never gonna remember, and even all my family, Christian, no Christians, know that I had an encounter with the enemy when I was only four. All my family, you can ask, they know, oh, Julie saw Satan when, when she was four. They know, even if they are, they are not Christians, they know, because I almost got crazy, I almost lose my mind for that experience that I had, and I was so young, and I didn't even know any, anything. And I used to also like have dreams. I, I was like activated suddenly and I used to have dreams and I knew when we are gonna have warfare at home and arguments, I knew. Because I used to have a, a specific dream with certain animals and they used to come in the dream and I used to see them. Next day I used to wake up knowing we are gonna have argument. And so I had, since a really young age, I just started to have the, the, these things. And one of the experiences was that I was sleeping with my mom. I wasn't sleeping, I was awake. And I started to hear someone coming in, in the room, but it was just me and my mom. And I started to hear this, this, this thing walking in the room. So my spiritual ear or the physical was so like open. And someone started to walk like that. Like it kind of like with like heels, when a woman was with heels, but I believe it's similar to to um, La Cabra, how you call Cabra? Like, um, like the goat with this sh like feet right walking like that and i remember when i was 12 i hear the same thing walking around my house so there was something there crazy so it hoops 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 yeah so it was walking like that inside the room as i was walking in suddenly the atmosphere in the room changed and this evil being listen to this it started to speak in tongues nobody told me oh yuli you know witches are speaking tongues darkness is speaking tongues they didn't i didn't know them i hear this thing coming in the room it wasn't even a dream it was real I don't promise because I don't like to promise, but trust me, it was real. He came in walking like that and speaking in tongues, but I knew this is not good. This is evil because the atmosphere changed and it was such a heaviness and it was just a scary and walking inside the room, singing in tongues. It was singing in tongues. I even hear like a kind of like instrument of chords, like a guitar or uh, something, something with, with like a guitar, something. And what happened was that I was there at petrified i was so so scared and what happened is that this thing speaking in tongues it started to lift up the blankets and it started to touch my my legs and my feet and the hands of this being were boiling hot like literally you put your hands in boiling water it was like that and it was touching my legs and my feet and i was there i couldn't even scream i couldn't even call my mom i was sweaty i was petrified and what happened was that I believe I passed out because we were so strong, I, I lose it, something happened. And since that moment, I started to have knee and legs issue, where I, I suffer a lot, like a lot of knee pains. You know, I couldn't even kneel down to pray because of my knees. And it was just like this awful pain constantly until recently um, in Rick London, we were doing a healing service with Alex, one of the uh, um, uh, leaders that in the house and he called me for an example he just called me oh Julie do you want to come to do an example and I was like oh yes cool and he was like do you have any pain and I told him like that that week those last the last month I had a lot of like awful pain in my knees that, that I couldn't even kneel down to pray and I told him oh yes I'm just having this pain and blah blah, blah. and what happened okay let's pray so he prayed and the Lord remind me that that was an open portal the enemy did something there to my legs because i also like to dance and that's part of how i worship like dancing with flags so the enemy stopped me since a really young age from doing that and he prayed for my knees and since that moment like, i don't have those pains anymore it's like now i can't kneel down perfectly like my bones crack like you hear them and they like they sound <laughs> they sound really strong but i don't feel that pain anymore and the Lord remind me like that was because of what happened with that experience with the enemy so that happened uh, the next day I wake up and I wake up 
like crazy telling my mom, crying, mom, this happened. Bro. My mom thought that I had a dream, but obviously she saw me like so, you know, bad that she realized something happened. So all day she just trying to distract me. And what happened is that I was in the mirror looking at myself and suddenly I started to see fire coming out of the mirror. And as I was looking at myself, I started to see eyes of fire coming out, obviously because of the experience that I had last night. I got that, you know, I started to cry, to scream, and everyone knew like, oh, Julie saw fire in the mirror. Like all of these crazy things that the village, people knew that I was having craziness. And what happened is that when I became Christian, what happened is that when I became Christian, I had like I, I started to have the most amazing dreams with Jesus. And in one of those dreams, he was in the street walking. He was naked. I saw all his 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 holes, his hair. I was calling him. That's when I became Christian. I was calling him Jesus, Jesus. And he was he turned around, he smiled, and he was like he didn't even talk. He just did that. Follow me, follow me. So I just started to follow him. And as I was running. I was getting closer, but he was getting farther. So he started to go up these stairs and I would just follow him with everything, follow him, follow him, follow him. When we arrived at the top, I I thought I got him. He was behind, but like, like looking that way. And suddenly he turned around. His face became like a lion with fire in his eyes and he jumped on me. And I wake up and this is why I have been here. I don't know if you can see a lion there that I bought recently because it was such a strong experience and the Holy Spirit told me not long ago that experience that you had when you were young with the fire in your eyes that was me the fire of Jesus like consuming fire of the eyes so that was when I started to have experiences with darkness and you know heavenly encounters and I just thought you know I'm losing it I'm getting crazy and for many years I used to sleep with my feet completely covered, even until now. But now, but now, I don't have fear. Now I do it because I grew up like that. Because of that encounter, I used to wrap all my feet because of that fear that it would happen again. And I do it now, but I'm not scared now. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not scared a- anymore. And so that was like two of the experience with the dark side and with heaven encounters. There was a fight there, you know. There was like, a, I believe that there was a fight there. I didn't see, but in the spiritual realm, I believe there was a fight for me. And what happened is that I started to, you know, have experiences with angels, angels saving me from um, from accidents. I have one band crushing me when, when I was really young. I was really skinny and small, and this thing crushed me, and it didn't, it, it didn't, it didn't break any of my bones. And 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 uh, yeah, and and I ha- started to have even those encounters with um with angels and what happened was that okay all of those things happened then i moved to spain when i was yeah i was probably like six six seven i moved to spain and then um in spain things obviously i grew up seeing my mom doing all these things all these you know uh, bringing women to the house which is doing um like tobacco readings, uh, crystal readings, tarot card readings, uh, cleansings for the house, cleansings for the body, for my dad, for his job, for luck, for remove all these things, burning sage everywhere for the demons and the energies. Uh, that for us was like daily bread. So it was it was normal. Like for me, it was normal. So I grew up like that. But it wasn't until the age of twelve that I started to tr- be trained to be a witch. So if you say there is a there is a correlation with the number 12 because that was when Jesus also went to the synagogue to teach and he started also ministry at 30. So recently I've been thinking, that's interesting. A lot of people start to be trained in the occultism when they are 12, right? And I also started ministry when I was 30, so last year. I mean, I believe I started before in the secret, but it became public at 30, so last year. So I believe that there is a a correlation there with the number 12 so at the age of 12 i started to be trained to be a witch with this i mean that i started to have witches of high rank um training me because i started suddenly i started to read people's mind and i started to see what other people were thinking and and i used to just read their minds and then they would say exactly what i was thinking and i used to like 
things of someone dying will come and I will be, oh, that person is gonna die and then contacting, oh, think he dies. So I started to have all of these things. And then I started to dream. I mean, I normally had dreams before, but suddenly now dreams became really strong. When I started to have dreams of, of terror attacks, this is one that I completely broke, that I didn't know what to do with all of that that was coming to me. It was a terror attack that happened in Madrid when I was only 12. That was the 11th of, of September or something happened when the trains in Madrid, two of them exploded. And I remember the night before I had the exact dream, seeing two trains exploding, a lot of people dead. And I wake up the next morning and I told my mom, oh, I had this awful dream. We put the news, we were having some br uh, breakfast and they came in announcing, oh, the train since uh, Madrid da, 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 just exploded. I saw that and I did, oh, and I started to feel like anxiety because I was having all of this craziness, reading people's mind, uh, now thinking, oh, these people is going to die, dying, now these dreams. And I was having all of these intense encounters. And I didn't know how to articulate that. I didn't know what to do with that. So then my mom had a friend that it was a witch. We were living in Santander in the north of Spain. She came, she was a white witch. So the white w witches are the ones that don't do anything bad to people, it's all good, it's all peaceful, with candles, good energy, so it's all good vibes, but it's witchcraft still. They think it's, it's fine because they also use the Bible, but it's still witchcraft. Regardless of white, black, green, purple, rainbow, everything is witchcraft, right? Because the spirit is not the Holy Spirit, it's a spirit, guys, so it's different. So what happened was that um, she, she saw me and she told my mom, your daughter has a gift. Um, let me train her um, and my mom said yes, that's fine train her so she was really good She was really nice to me. She started to you know to train me because I told her like I have this happening I declare things and things are happening around and having these dreams and I don't know how to control these dreams She is she told me how to control my dreams So how to turn my dreams around every time that I used to see something wrong how to have the power to f flip those dreams she started to it, it teach me the power of the clearing. So this is when we come, even they know. She started to tell me, you have the power in your mouth, which is we declare and it becomes true. You call someone, you are declaring that becomes true. So she started to tell me, be careful with what you declare. Be careful with the things that you are seeing and declaring. So she kind of like started to train me on um, yo, that candles, how to bring good, good, good things using white candles. One day my cat got lost. I used to love that cat. And I was crying, I was crazy. And she helped me. She said, let's do this ritual. Bring the white candle, turn the white candle on. Let's do a ritual to bring your cat back. And she just put me like, concentrate, imagine that the cat is coming back. Let's start doing these, de these declarations. The next day, the cat came, came, back, came back again. So she told me, she started to, you know, to teach me that, you know, you have power. Like, you, the, the, all of these things that you are like, experiencing is a gift, but you can control them. You can control your dreams. You can control the way you speak. You can attract those things to you to come. So it was all kind of like, kind, kind of like, it wasn't dark, it was, it was good. And he used to like do the candle readings to me and tarot readings and you know, good, good things. Well, good, that for me, it was like good. It, it was like I started to understand I have power. Then we moved to another city, to Asturias. And what happened is that um, my mom, so that witch stayed there. My mom used to have another best friend in Colombia. She was her best friend witch. And she used to call her, and this witch, she was a witch of high rank. She used to astro project into our houses because witches can astro project. And we as Christian, we don't astro project, but we teletransport. And we see in the Bible how Philip, she teletransport to a different city. He literally did, the Holy Spirit took him. So for us as Christians, if we are guided by the Holy Spirit, we don't force those experiences, they happen. So that's what makes the, the, the difference, that they force the experience, we allow the Holy Spirit to take control. Amen. So um, what happened? Oh yeah, so this witch in Colombia used to astro project, yes, law of attraction exactly new age all of those things and what happened is that um this witch from colombia she used to astro project in, mom, in, in, in mama's house because in the spirit when you astro project well witches they can see the state of the house and they can 
bless the place or release curses in that place, release demons in that place for houses to be destroyed. So if someone comes to you and you are a witch and they're asking, oh, I, I want my, you know, my, um, you know, if there is a couple and this woman wants to break the marriage, she goes to the witch and the witch kind of like can put courses on that and one of the ways is that by astral projecting if there is an open portal in the house this is why it's so important the way that you have your house listen listen to this the way that you have your house if there is open portals it doesn't matter if you are a christian it doesn't matter there are a lot of christians being attacked a lot of them why because they don't know these things so witches can astral project into the houses and release no Caroline, you can. It has to be guided by the Holy Spirit. It not is witchcraft. And it's dangerous also to do it by yourself because you can die in the process. Literally. So this is why it's important that as, as Christians understand that we need to consecrate our houses. You have the authority to, uh, uh, to protect your house because there are a lot of Christians that are being attacked and they don't even know why. So what happens is that this witch can astral project into that house. You know, the, there are portals open. She can enter and release a demon of adultery in that place, a demon of division in the house to destroy the house and then come back again and nothing happened. Okay? So this witch in Colombia you, you used to come to us to see the state of our house. Oh, maybe you need cleansing here. Let's do a ritual and blah, blah, blah. Um, so my mom used to do the things with her. And it was her best friend. She used to move in white magic and black magic, both of them. Then what happened was that another witch came into the scene into our family but this witch she was a black witch she was bad but what happened is that obviously i was i was trained to be a, i was still learning i used to sense things and th and see things but not to the extent of recognizing she's a black witch mom be careful so i didn't know that and obviously she came so sweet she came so good uh, she kind of like trapped my mom so my mom thought that she was good the witch in Colombia you used to call my mom and tell her look be careful because I see someone around you that's not coming with good intentions she said are you allowing another witch in your house and my mom said like, uh, like yes but she's good and this this other witch you, you, you used to say no she is a witch of really high rank and you don't know who are you bringing into your house be careful my mom thought that she was being jealous because witches are territorial Okay, they, they control territories, not they control, but the, the principalities kind of like control the territory. So witches are territorial. So that's what happened. So my, my mom said to her, you just been jealous. Like, you know, it's fine, relax. So my mom I, I stopped talking to her for a while because of the same issue. She keep telling her, be careful. I can go into your house. There is a black cloth covering your house. Be careful. Um, so what happened is that this witch again saw me and she told my mom but she now was like insane this new witch was crazy she saw me i was um 14 15 she saw me and she told my mom oh, your daughter has something your daughter has something let's do something about it let's just let's just do something about it and my mom said like oh, oh. my mom didn't know she was like yes okay another witch was tra training her it's fine get her so this witch grabbed me we did a, we did a ritual and they consecrated me to a principality so they consecrated me to this demon, to this um, Waikaipuro that is an Indian Venezuelan principality, part of the three powers, Venezuelan powers. Um, so consecrated me to them. They told me he's gonna be your spirit guy now. You know, wh whatever you need, ask him, good or bad. They get me um, a coin with his face, gold coin, as a representation of our covenant. So now I used to take that coin with me everywhere. I just started to feel his presence everywhere, the way he sound, the way he smell, every time. But then, obviously, because I used to see this witch doing rituals with black, like with my mom, like doing things against other people and trying to see other people in the spirit and put things of them. I just started to be like interested, right? So she started to teach me tobacco readings to see other people's what they were doing what's gonna happen to them with crystals she started to introduce me to all of these crystals different types of crystals okay if you do this this is for healing this is for energy this is for thinking blah, blah blah and i had like a little purple thing with all my crystals then i used to put them in the sun to absorb all the energy cleansing them with with salt and and doing this kind of rituals with crystals so crystals are witchcraft 
okay? Be careful with the crystals because I used to believe that, um, you, 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 you know, like healing, protection. So I used to have all my crystals perfect with the energy. And also I started to understand that these are spirit guides. So remember, they copy. We have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, who is the Holy Spirit? He's our guide. He's our counselor. He should be our everything. And now I have this demon as my spirit guide. So this is why I say there's so many correlations. And he started to, he started to, um, yeah, to, to, to like guide me. When I didn't like someone, and you used to be like, let's do something. Like, what are we going to, and we used to have conversations and used to sit on my bed before going to sleep. And I used to feel his presence. <laughs> rushing into the room because he used to have a particular sound and a smell he used to smell awful and i knew that he was there if something will break in the house in the middle of the night i knew he's here now and i knew and i will sit in there and talk to him so look the correlations of how the spiritual realms work and how us as a christians you can use what about using magnets for healing you shouldn't be anything you have the holy spirit look if you are using something else that is not the Holy Spirit you're doing witchcraft, knowingly or unknowingly. If you are using crystals thinking that that's going to give you healing, if you are using magnets thinking that that's going to bring you healing, you are entering into witchcraft. And instead of bringing healing, you are bringing a different course and more infirmities. Be careful. We do prophetic acts, we guide them by the Holy Spirit with certain things like oil or wine to activate the power, release the power from heaven to earth. But that's not your source. The healing doesn't come from, from, the, from the crystal. The healing doesn't come from the blood. Okay? It's the Holy Spirit. So be careful. Be careful. That's dangerous if you are stepping into, into that. Remove those things. Repent, renounce, command the Spirit to live. Gloria. Because you might be opening portals for more infirmities. Be careful, please. Um... What about vitamins? Vitamins are fine. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> yes, you believe I have the Holy Spirit. No, I don't believe so. No, everyone that says that's Christian is Christian. I'm not going to answer questions now because look, it's 10, 17. I need to hurry up. So, um, what I was saying? What I was saying? Please help. What I was saying? Oh, yes. This demon. So, he was my guy. So, he was guiding me. So, I started to step in into black witchcraft with this woman she was training me if I didn't like someone at home and at, at school and this, this girl you used to like the guy that I used to like I used to tell her what are we going to do what? so she started to train me in that area I just started to learn to astro project I just started to learn you know that I had a power like a different power that this which told me and I like it because I just started to feel like powerful that I could control everyone around me that's witchcraft control and manipulation and I used to like just realize wow this is good but at the same time I just started to see a lot of destruction in my house the vision is starting is started to come in my house the vision in my parents um arguments craziness and i started to suddenly battle with depression and suicide i tried to commit suicide cut my veins my brother that w was there came he saved me he called the hospital he was only like a nine he called the hospital no pills that they were pills i was gone and the doctors came rushing to the house. Uh, yes, please. I will close the I will close the chat so you don't. For now, sorry guys, I <laughs> disconnect the chat so you don't. Um, okay, so you don't uh, right. So what happened is that is that is that um, yeah. So I was rushed to the hospital. I have a lot of pills, so they have to do like a washing in my stomach or something to get out all, all of that. Cleanse me inside, and I started to battle with depression and all of and all of those things. And I just didn't want to live anymore because suddenly I realized there's all of this division in my house. You you, you know all this hate. Suddenly my post traumas started to come and realize I'm not loved. My mom used to be really strict with me, and I was just like I can't take this anymore. So I tried to commit suicide a lot of times to the point that I, I have to do a tattoo in here because I was embarrassed of all the scars that I used to have in here so I have to do a tattoo in here in my arm um, and then um, that happened and what happened was that this witch was doing some things behind what happened is that I have to leave my house because there was a lot of warfare there this witch took me to her house and sorry before this before I left with her to live with her she said Let's do a ritual in this house. 
and um, my mom said, oh, what type of ritual? She said, oh, let's invoke, you know, some familiar spirits and, you, you, you know, ancestors so they can come and speak to us and see what is going to happen and all of this. And oh, 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 obviously we were used to that, so we thought, oh, let's just do it. So we did it in the entrance of the house. We sit in circle. Circle means unity. This is why the church, the enemy is scared of a church that is united. This is why there's so many divisions in church. That church is not going anywhere. If you see that there is a lot of division in the leadership, it's not going anywhere. That's why we have to be so much careful in the leadership that there's unity. That's the most important thing because that's, the enemy is not scared of a divided church or a divided house. He's not scared of that. So this is why we sit in a circle in unity with our hands grabbed. You, you know, making sure that our bodies were in a right posture. We started to speak in tongues because which is a speaking tongues? They copy. They don't create darkness, don't create. They copy everything from us that was given to us. So that's why tongues is important. And I didn't even know that Christians speak in tongues. So we started to speak in tongues. This language started to be possessed by this demon. And as she was talking in tongues, this demon turned to my mom, mom and started to say, someone in your family is going to die in one week. <gasps> we did this because I look at my mom and, and I thought, if it's me, I don't want to know, right? So this demon started to ask my mom, do you want to know who is going to die? Do you want to know who is going to die? My mom started to cry and she said, no, 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 no. So we closed the session and after that something happened. So I left with this witch to live with her. I was living with her, doing the rituals, doing the things. The atmosphere was just so heavy. And I remember I had a dream. And in the dream, I saw these crocs, these animals, these animals related with death. <coughs> and what happened that they were trying to come to hit me in my head. And I saw my dad, he came, he did that. He protected me, but these animals started to hit his head. And I didn't understand by that point the meaning of the dream. Okay, I'm gonna come back to that later. So what happened was that one week later, um, my mom calls this witch, this black witch, at four in, in the morning, four five in the morning, saying, "Come home quick! Something happened. Come home quick! Something happened happened with uh, Julie's dad. Come home quick!" And I thought because they're having a lot of arguments, I thought he abandoned us. I thought he has left. And before that, before I went to the, this witch house, he sat with me one day outside and he told me, "Look, this is happening with your mom." this is happening in your house I just want to know if I divorce her if you will come with me to live obviously he started to cry and I have never I never saw I that was one of the things that helped me that caused me a lot to heal knowing that he asked me for help and I turned around I was this is probably why after after what happened I tried to commit suicide even as a Christian because of the guiltiness thinking he tried to ask me for help and I didn't do anything so he was there he, he cried and I said to, to, to him look yes let's let, let let's go let's um let's live together let's grab our you, you know my brothers and let's just leave my mom because I didn't like my mom anyway she was awful she was a nightmare so that was the then I was living with the witch my dad came I he came to draw me something he didn't even look at my face he was like a completely different person he went inside the house he didn't even look at me he dropped the things and left like a robot completely and I was just like feeling in my heart I feel like this is going to be the last time that I'm going to see him and I was just there looking, feeling like it's going to be the last time. And what happened is that, okay, my mom called this witch, say, come home now, something happened. So we went there. <clears throat> and what happened? I thought my dad left. I, I saw my mom outside. She was crying, 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 crying. And I told her, what happened? What happened? But she couldn't even speak. I was seven, 18 by that point. And then I entered the house and it was like this really dark present in the house this heaviness that it was just impossible. I went to the room, the lights were on, I, it was empty. I thought my dad has died. I, my dad has abandoned us. He couldn't take it, he has left, he's gonna divorce my mom. I was upset because I wanted to go with him, so I thought he left me. So I then went outside and I have the feeling to check in the storage that we have next to the house. So I check in there and I saw my dad there hang. So he committed suicide. He was there, hung, he committed suicide. Obviously, I saw him and I completely broke. I couldn't even believe it. It was like this crying. It was awful. And to the point that, the, obviously, they took my dad, all of that stuff. I, I saw him there. My brother then came, saw him. My brother reacted with anger to the point that until now, he's still healing from that, even after, after 13 years. And 
we stayed in the house for one week because the atmosphere was impossible. I keep having dreams with blood. I, at some point, my mom tells me this. I don't remember. I, I was probably possessed. I don't even know because the atmosphere was so heavy. <clears throat> even our cat was talking. Imagine how crazy. This sounds crazy, but my cat was talking, asking for help. And <clears throat> this is how darkness was in that place that even the animal was talking human. It was just insane. And my mom said that I tried to commit suicide in the same place that my dad did that days later. I don't remember that. I probably blocked that, but I don't remember that. But she, she said that they found me there trying to think it, dying, and they managed to help me. They dropped me down. My mom realized oh, there's something in here. I need to leave this house. So what happened was that the witch in Colombia, do you remember? She called my mom and she said, oh, I just had the sense that something happened to your husband. I know that she's dead. And my mom said, what? She said, yes, she, he came asking for help. Obviously, my mom was like, what happened? And my mom, this woman said to my mom, I told you that that witch was there in your house to destroy your family. She came to the, with the assignment of destroying your family. You allow her to enter your house. Now she has destroyed and now she's coming for you. So I was next and then <clears throat> my mom was next. She wanted my mom for some reason. She wanted my mom to be alone. So what, what happened is that this witch told my mom, leave the house straight away because of the darkness that was in the house. We moved with my aunt in the city and we were living, we were sleeping together in a, in a room. My two year old brother, my um, 11 year old brother, my mom and me, <coughs> in a bed is scared because we were having so much oppression, so many demons, so many nightmares. It was darkness was following us and this witch told us, Grab Psalm 23 and 20 and 91 and start reading it and declaring it. That's when, when my mom decided to repent because of the witchcraft. Because she knew my husband and my heart was destroyed because of witchcraft. And she cried, 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 cried. Obviously all the guiltiness, but she repented. And she, and she made a promise to God. And she said, never again I'm going to touch witchcraft. Never again. And that day... She repented, she cried, I was there, and she started to read Psalms 23 and 21, constantly, day and night, day and night, day and night. And one month later, because I used to have so much anger, still, I didn't repent for the witchcraft that I was doing. I was having so much anger that I left my mom. I told her, I don't want to be with you. You did this to my dad, I'm leaving you. So after one month of my dad dying, I left her. I moved with my ex. <clears throat> and from that point, I just tried to commit suicide. A drinking I just didn't like I just there wasn't any point of me living I was still doing witchcraft especially to this um, guy that as that I was was with because I didn't want him to leave me he was like kind of like the only the only person that I have there so I used to put witchcraft on him so he wouldn't let me like to control him so what happened was that after that um, in one of the in the in these years I went to visit my mom and we hear of a church that were giving prophecies, obviously because we were witches, but my mom wasn't practicing anymore. Now she wanted to hear her future. <coughs> so she, we went to this church that they, that they were giving prophecy and we were there just for that. And we sit in there, they gave us a prophecy that we will move to London, and that we are gonna study in London to me, my brother and my cousin. And my mom thought like that was wrong because they prophesied the same to the three of us. So my mom left angry, but I went to that place and I started to feel like, oh, this is prophecy. This is different. What is this? So I moved out. I went to where I was living. And I started to ask my friends, do you know any church that give prophecies or any places that, you, you, you know, I was still a witch, but now I knew that someone else could come and prophesy to me. So they, they gave me the address of a, a small church in the city where I was living in a different city. And I just decided to travel to that church. I wasn't Christian, I was still doing witchcraft, I was still trying to commit suicide. And I was went to that place completely broken, fatherless, hating everyone possible, hating myself. You, you know, I also by that point I also had an abortion. So I have all of these traumas, all of these things, and I just I just thought, let me go to this place and see what is this. It was a tiny church. He was an apostle, I'm never gonna forget him. He was my first spiritual father. I went there, I entered, it was, it was only like 15, 20 people. 
I entered and I never felt that present in my life. I went in and this man came and he just hugged me and I started to shake. Something so strong that I have never felt in my life, even as a witch, nothing. I didn't renounce anything, I didn't repent, they didn't tell me renounce witchcraft, nothing. Deliverance didn't happen like, ah, no. It was pure love. God knows what we need at the perfect time, and he came with love. That's all I knew, love, like never before. And I started to shake. And it wasn't like, we know that some people, you know, they shake, but they are just, you know, some people are just doing it. I couldn't stop shaking. I couldn't stop shaking. I keep shaking. And I, and I didn't know that feeling. And I keep, I got addicted to that. Like God knew how to wrap me. I left that place shaking. I went home shaking. And I was like, what is this? And I just started to look like burning him. I was like, what's this man doing? All the healing. And suddenly, phew, something opened in me. And, I'm, and I got addicted. Now, I wasn't addicted to this spirit guy. Now I was addicted to the Holy Spirit. Now I knew there was something more in here that I need to know. And I started to watch videos of healing, of deliverance, of the presence of God falling on people. And I used to go twice per week to that church, like 30 minutes far from my city, to encounter God. Listen to me. Every single day that I went to that place, I'm not lying, and God knows this. Every single day that I went to that place, I had an encounter. Every single day. To the point that one day, because it was so strong, the shaking in that place, that even when, when I was behind holding the other person, the presence would follow me and I would fall. It was just, it, I have, listen, even until now, I had experiences, but I have never experienced that. I was so addicted and hungry that I told one of my friends that I used to party with, you need to come and see this. This, this you are going to see what I'm experiencing and seeing. I told her, she came with me. She entered, the presence fell, both of us on the floor shaking. Before, when we were in the world, we used to leave the clubs drunk, shaking. Now we left that place shaking and drunk. I'm not joking, when I'm telling you, grabbing ourselves, shaking. Li like, literally, we couldn't even control that presence. And she became Christian, she's married, she has a beautiful baby now and she's Christian now. So all of that, so that was the, the place where I, the Lord grabbed me and he was like, you know what, I know how to grab you for me with presence, with, because I used to experience all this heaviness before, all this darkness, so God knows what you need to grab you back, right? So that happened after that I moved to London, but I got far from God again, <clears throat> because I wasn't going to the church anymore, so I didn't know. I didn't know where anyone to guide me. I, I fall again into depression. I tried to commit suicide again. But that time, I told God, if you are actually here and you want to save me and do something with me, bring help. I was on the floor bleeding, yeah, trying to commit suicide. Suddenly, someone in the, in the house knocked the door, and it was a Christian lady. She came in. My mom allowed her to come in. She, she was amazing, like, we are also here today because of her. She came inside the house and she said, can I talk to your daughter? So I went downstairs, broken, bleeding, and she just grabbed me with so much love. And she said, there, there, there is a place for you, it's called the impact. So that's the place where all the young people go. And I just started to go there, I got my first leader, she was a prophet. And she was the first one. She and her husband started to train me. They started to teach me about intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I didn't have a crazy deliverance. My deliverance came before. So first was God surrounding me with love. All of those things te te teaching me. Then I have a different leader that she was also a prophet. She also taught me about intimacy, hearing the voice of God. And what happened was that, listen to this. This is why it's important. You've been Christian doesn't mean that you are free from everything and that's it. There are legal rights that you have to break, even iniquities. I was Christian, had those experiences, but there was still a spirit of suicide around me and I still was trying to kill myself. I was a Christian and I have this spirit guy, this demon chasing me even as a Christian. To the point that I met my husband, 
I got pregnant, we didn't marry, I was battling still with a lot of things, I still believe in God, but I got pregnant with him. And what happened was that this demon, I used to feel him sometimes come to the room, break things, but now I had fear because now I knew that he was a, a demon. So I, w I was fearing, but I didn't know how to get rid of it. <coughs> so maybe some of you <coughs> are, are <coughs> sorry, maybe some of you are experiencing these things that you feel that you are being tormented, that you feel there is a presence, but you don't know how to get rid of it, even as Christians, right? And what happened was that I never shared with anyone about my background. Not even some of my family members right now, when they hear this testimony, they are just, their mind is probably like, whoa. I never share with anyone, even with my friends. Probably my friends didn't even know that I was involved in witchcraft, that I was in the background doing witchcraft. I met my, my, my husband. He didn't know that I did any of that because for me, that was a curse. For me, all of that was literally what killed my dad. So for me, even as a Christian, I just revealed last year that I, I, I was an s -wit. after 13 years of being a Christian. I never shared with any of my leaders, anyone, until last year with Prophet Tommy. We said we had a conversation and I shared with, with, with him and he said, oh, we have to do an interview. And that was the first interview that you will see ever on Rick Nation about casting out demons. That was the very first one. And now I realized, now God told me, now is your time to share your testimony. And I was like, but I'm scared. People, is, they are not gonna understand what I went through. And the Holy Spirit told me, they can take everything from you, but they can never take your testimony. And that's when I understood my testimony, power in that, and I started to share it. People started to contact me. Some of you are here because of that interview that you saw on Deep Believer. So this woman came out of nowhere, contacted me, and it, it's just amazing what the Lord is doing. Anyway, so what happened when I was coming back, and I'm gonna finish with this because we it's long now. What happened is that this demon that was still around, even me as a Christian, there was still a legal right and a principality. Now, my husband became my head, my authority. So demons and principalities, they understand authority. They are really rank, and this is where we go to a spiritual warfare. This is why a lot of people are engaging in a spiritual warfare, binding principalities. They are suffering from counterattack, and they don't know what's going on. So what happened is that there was still a legal right, a contract, with this demon, with this spirit guy. So what happened was that my mom broke the contract, apparently, <coughs> to this demon, because if you give them the legal right, you have to break that too. But what happened that now my husband was kind of like my authority now. My husband came one day and he told me that, he didn't know any of this. He told me that he had a dream with this weird Indian, in the dream asking her for permission for me or something like that. This demon that I'm telling you, this principality, Waikaipuro, if you google it, he is an aborigine. He dresses like an Indian, right? So my husband didn't know this. When my husband told me that, that this demon was coming asking him for like permission, I shared with him my story. I told him, look, we obviously I didn't share the whole thing because even until recently my husband heard the whole story. He didn't he didn't even know. I told him like look there was a demon that I was consecrated to when I was a witch and blah blah blah. And um, I told my mom, it's still around, this demon is, is still chasing. I used to feel him sometimes and fear and move things and I used to be just like to my husband, did you hear that? Did you see that? Because I, I felt even as a Christian and um, we realized there is a legal right. And I told my husband, if he comes back again, tell him that he doesn't have any legal right. Don't even talk to him. Break the legal right right there. My husband did that. He didn't even like. He didn't even believe in any of this because he wasn't even Christian. He's he's not Christian yet, but he's g getting there. And he didn't even know. So what we did, we did a deliverance. That's why the deliverance started for me. I throw that gold covenant coin that I had with this demon, we break the legal right, I went through deliverance, repenting, I cry a lot, vomit a lot, I scream a lot, and even until now, now I'm getting healed of the traumas that I experienced. I feel like good now, but the Lord is still getting little things now and there where, you know, we need healing. And so that was like the process from that witchcraft broke in my life. This is why for me it's so important intimacy, because we can jump from 
the prophetic to witchcraft is just like a really thin line. This is why we have to be careful as prophetic people to be careful not to jump on witchcraft. We have to be careful. So what happened is that this is why right now intimacy with the Holy Spirit is so important. This is where right now the Holy Spirit right now he is my spirit guide. The Holy Spirit right right now is my everything. He is the only one in my life and this is why I surrender to him everything completely because I know where I come from. I was surrendered to a principality to a demon. Now I have the Holy Spirit. Now when people come and tell me you are a witch still. There was a lot of comments in that interview hating that hurt me a lot. I cry for days like, oh, but I am not a witch. I'm not doing witchcraft anymore. And it was part of the process because now I read those comments and the Holy Spirit told me, you need to know who you are. That's your testimony. People are not going to agree with what you are going to say. Some people are going to say that you are still doing witchcraft, but the Holy Spirit said, trust the process. And every single day, this is why self-deliverance is important. Every single day I come to the cross and I repent. Father, forgive me if I have said things that I shouldn't. Forgive me if I have done witchcraft knowingly and unknowingly. Father, forgive me if I have spoken words that I shouldn't declare things, Father, for every single day. Then, Father, I renounce, I renounce this. I command these demons to live. I break the legal right. It has to be daily. Don't think that you are going to have one deliverance session and you are done. It's not like that. Is daily break the legal right every single day. If you are dealing with sexual immorality, every single day command that spirit to live. Every single day repent, renounce, and command that spirit to live. It's not a joke. This is a process, and I'm not here. You know, I'm not the perfect. I'm not the best, most anointed person, but I understand now where I stand, and what it makes the difference between me and many other people is that I believe in surrender. I have a lot of fails, a lot of things that I still have to change. But everything comes to the question, where do you go when the day is over? Do you go to bed or do you come to the cross? <laughs> Every single night, go to the cross and repent and renounce. And that's what was going to make the difference. This is why don't attack someone that is a Christian, that you see that they are being weak in one area. Don't attack them. Don't say, oh, what they are doing like that. Because you don't know if behind doors they are going to the cross repenting for what they just did. They repent, but now you are sinning, talking against them. That's why. Let's be careful with the things that we say. Let's be careful with the things that we declare. And everything comes to surrender and intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You're always going to hear me about intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Then, if you don't agree with the things that you say, you are welcome to go and pray and fast. Bring that to the Holy Spirit and ask Him to show you. I'm just sharing from my own testimony, from my own experience, from what the Lord has shown me. And that's the most important thing of a Christian person, that we need to live a life surrender to Jesus and to the Holy Spirit so we don't come into control and manipulation and to any other Je Jezebel experience. Every single day, we need to repent for those things renounce for those things amen so I just want us to pray before we go um, so I just wanted before we started with this topic I just wanted to share with you guys that the spiritual warfare is real the spiritual realm is real they speak in tongues they have churches too they do rituals they use you know the blood and the body <clears throat> We have the Holy Communion. <coughs> they do sacrifices and drink the blood because these principalities gain power when they drink the blood. They gain power when they drink the blood and eat the body of the sacrifices. Who is our perfect sacrifice? Jesus. What happened with the Holy Communion? It's the blood and the body of Jesus. Am I right? So when you understand those things, you know... I shouldn't be living like a worm. I shouldn't be living like a, you know, mediocre. You shouldn't be living like that. When you understand those things, you know that there is power in the name of Jesus. You are singing that song and you don't even know that there is actually power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the name and in the blood of Jesus. 
listen, and I'm going to finish with this story so you understand. After I became Christian, so a few years ago, um, I had a dream. And obviously, I was aware that witches, you know, they try to astral project to see you. They can do rituals or, or things to see you in the spirit, to put things on you, even to know your location. <coughs> I was, this night, I was sleeping. I was Christian, and the Holy Spirit showed me in a dream. I was walking inside this house. I had like a cloth of invisibility over me. Carolyn, no. No, don't do that. <laughs> you increase the prophetic by spending time with the holy spirit not by using salt the soul is a weapon it doesn't activate the prophetic it's a weapon of a spiritual warfare but you activate the prophetic by spending time with the holy spirit so what happened is that in this dream um i was with a cloth of invisibility and i started to walk inside this house <coughs> and i was guided into one room so i pushed the room when I entered into the room, guess who was there in the room? The black witch with another witch sitting in the bed. Because when you dream with bed, bed means intimacy. It doesn't mean like sex or anything. It means that relationship with a person, intimacy, unity. They were sitting in that bed, both of them, and they were doing witchcraft on me and my mom. They were trying to see what we were doing with our lives, where we were living, and I was there standing in front of them. And I believe that this is what happened. Because it was a dream, but I believe that in reality, the Holy Spirit was allowing me to see this, to teach me something. I, I had this cloth of invisibility and I was there looking at them and they were literally doing witchcraft. And they were like, I don't know why we can't see, see them. Where are they? What is this that we, doesn't allow us to see them? They keep saying, there is something white around them. We can penetrate that light. What is that light? And they keep their light like, stressed and arguing that they couldn't astral project because there is this white thing all over us protecting us. And I left the room and I wake up from the dream and the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit told me, see, I am your protector now. No witch, no warlock, Nothing can come now inside of you because now I am your protector. And that's when I realized, because I used to fear that they will come. Then I realized, wow, Jesus, the blood of Jesus, have power. There is power in the blood of Jesus, protection. So this is why I know if you're a witch and you are coming in here tonight, your time is off. You don't have, <laughs> this is not the right place for you. I'm telling you. You have their demons, but my angels are stronger than your demons. And you might have power, but you don't have authority. And I have the authority in Jesus Christ to remove your power. You don't have any power. You don't have any legal right in Jesus' name. It's not me. It's Jesus. So they have the power, but they don't have the authority. This is why some of you in here, why are you so scared of witches? Why are you so scared of these people? Don't be scared. They might have the power, but they don't have the authority. You have the power and the authority to shut down those demons. In Jesus' name, release those warrior angels. Release the fear of the Lord, because you can do that. Release the fear of the Lord, so they repent in Jesus' name. We need to start learning strategies of a spiritual warfare and with this guys i'm going to finish tonight um this is just the beginning i just wanted to share with you my testimony because i believe that this is really important because i want you to understand by my testimony that this is true that this is real a spiritual realm is is, is real these people understand the secrets and the weapons that are us now I'm not scared. If people tell me you're doing witchcraft, don't you? Ah, nah, 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 uh, uh. The enemy doesn't create, he copies. These are weapons that are us. If not, look in the Bible. Is there in the Bible? You tell me, give me a Bible verse, it's in the Bible. Those things are in the Bible. <clears throat> what is my. What is your spiritual principle when you spend time with the Holy Spirit? What do you mean, my spiritual principle? Sorry, I don't un un understand that part. I don't understand that part. If someone can explain, please, to me. 
Okay, I'm gonna teach you guys how to, how, how to do cleansing in your house, how to pray. Um, left ear ringing is normally witchcraft, but it could be other things. So I just wanna pray for you before. Um, I'm gonna give you those weapons, Nikki. I'm gonna guide, tell you exactly how to break those things, protect your house, cleanse your house. All those weapons, I'm gonna give them to you. <coughs> oh. You mean intimacy with the Holy Spirit? What is the principle? So the principle, the first thing that you need to understand is that it's a di dialogue, it's not a monologue. You don't sit in there, it's talking, talking, talking. You need to stay still and listen to him. But the first thing that I do, worship. For me, I am a worshiper. That is my first thing that I do, worship. I put this type of music, instrumental worship music, or I put any other worship. I have really good music. I love it. I have a lot of people say, oh, what's your music? So um, on Teacher World, you actually have some of my worship there. So you put worship and you just sit in there without asking anything. You start to worship Jesus. You start to give him thanks because it says that you need to come to the throne with thanksgiving and praise. That's the key. So you come to the presence, first of all, worship you. And you start declaring his kingdom, declaring that there's no other kingdom like his kingdom, declaring that there's no other name, that's worship. Declaring that there's no other name like the name of Jesus. That every knee has to bow down, that everyone in your family has to bow down at the name of, and the name of Jesus and confess that Jesus is Lord. If you have like people in converted, start declaring that you start from there and you start changing the atmosphere. When you're worshiping, you don't realize. Don't worship with headphones. No. Allow everything to listen to the worship, to the atmosphere to worship. And that's how you enter into intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You start in there. If you don't feel for some reason that like you want to do that because you're tired, because you're oppressed, because speaking tongues. That's what I always do. If I feel that there is uh, that there is something that doesn't let me sit in and worship, and start speaking in tongues. Speak in tongues. 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, sometimes one hour. Speak in tongues until you break something, until something in the spirit breaks. And then it's lifted. Now you worship. But that's a lot of things. But the first one is um, worship. So I just want us to, um, let's just pray now. I just want us to pray. Thank you, Holy Spirit. How did I learn to speak in tongues? It was another pr process because as a witch, I used to do it. So when I became Christian, I was too scared of doing it because I was thinking that I was doing witchcraft. And I used to see all these people speaking in tongues and I used to come against them. See, a lot of people think that's witchcraft. Even me as an ex witch, I was like, no, that's witchcraft. No, no, no. And I used to just be so scared of doing it or even saying, when I started to have the desire, even I got angry because I used to say to the Holy Spirit, why that guy, he's on the weekends drinking, he's coming in here and you are baptizing him with tongues. And I'm here fasting and praying and thinking, and the Holy Spirit confronted me. And he's like, it's no, I don't, like, I don't give tongues to who you want, it's who I want and when I want. So then I, I broke and I repented. And it just happened one day. I don't know if I have shared the testimony of how I received tongues. What happened is that one day, this is why I worship with no headphones. I used to worship with my headphones so my children wouldn't distract me. I was worshiping in the kitchen with my headphones. The Holy Spirit told me, remove your headphones. And I'm like, okay, I remove my headphones, put the worship loud. I started to worship this atmosphere, worship, worship, worship in the spirit, focusing in Jesus, worship, worship. When suddenly the Holy Spirit told me, open your mouth. And I'm like, why? He just said, obey. Open my mouth. And he said, I start saying Abba. And I'm like, it's weird. Okay. So I started to say Abba, Abba. When phew, something hit me 
and I always used to hear people saying the fire and about, I was like, I don't know, started to feel this fire coming inside of me. I started to vomit words and I fell on the floor crying like finally, I was so happy. I was crying and crying, speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues, crying, crying, crying. And that's how I was baptized. And now, I mean, I'm not scared now of speaking in tongues because now I know the enemy doesn't create, he copies. It's taking the tongues that belong to us, for them, that's us. So now, you know, the crying for I, I am a cry baby. I cry for everything. You know, I became Christian and I just cry for like joy. You are you seriously, you see me crying is because I'm so grateful with what the Lord has done. That I literally don't have any words of grateful that I you know when you are so grateful when someone gives you a lot of money and you don't have anything and you're just like, oh thank you. That's how I feel every single day. That's how I feel every, every single day that I come to the present. I, I, I cry. And my son tells me, why don't you always cry? You always cry and you should be happy. And I'm like, I'm crying of happiness. So now when he sees me crying, he knows, oh, my mommy is crying of happiness. Because I can't. Sometimes, you know, you cry because you are letting things go. But most of the, of the times, it's tears of joy. Guys, it's 11. Let's just pray, please. I am a crumb baby. Welcome to the club crying babies <laughs> happy cry let's just pray father we just give you thanks father for for this time father father thank you for the power of the testimony father thank you for your blood jesus thank you for the cross thank you for everything that you have done father in us and you are going to do through us we just give you thanks Father, because we know, Father, that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your mercy, if it wasn't, Father, for your grace. So I just lift up your name in high, Father, right now. And I just declare that you are the king, that there's no one like you, that you are the only Lord, that you are the only Savior. So I just worship you, Father, for everything that you are doing in my life, for everything that you are going to continue to do. And Father, right now, in Jesus' name, Father, I just declare, Father, freedom, Father, in each one of them. I just release, Father, your freedom. I release, Father, right now, freedom right now in Jesus' name. That those chains that have been trying, Father, to stop their fear, their feet from advancing, Father, they fall right now in Jesus' name. Everything that has been trying to, you know, from them, Father, to advancing, to even to grab things in the spirit. And I feel that some of you in here, some of the things that you grab, you feel like it's so close and suddenly it's gone. That you feel that you are so close to get something and suddenly the things you feel like, like they are banished. Father, I pray that right now in Jesus' name. I break the legal right that the enemy have over their life, Father. Every spirit, Father, that is trying to uh, uh, steal things from them, Father, right now. I pray that right now in Jesus' name. And I just declare, Father, that by the blood of Jesus they are redeemed. That by the blood of Jesus they are safe. That by the blood of Jesus, Father... They are protected, Father. And I just pray, Father, that you will open their eyes of the understanding, Father. Allow them to see, Father, in the spirit. Allow them to see, Father, that they are more with them than the ones that are against them. Open their eyes the way you did with Elisha. Allow them to see that they have a legion of angels around them, fighting with them. That all they have to do is partner with those angels to release freedom, Father. Open our spiritual eyes. Even, Father, we, if we are doing things that we shouldn't do, if we are doing witchcraft unknowingly, Father, open our eyes and bring this sermon into our lives, Father, in Jesus' name. And thank you, Father, for freedom. Thank you, Father, for everything that you are doing, Father. You are so holy. You are so holy, King Jesus. La brocha cararande de riande a la brose que ariande a ho arararara shakara brande se que andororo shaka la branes core brende se que andarara shakariande a ho arororo shake thank you jesus for your blood we worship you Father, I just break, Father, right now in Jesus' name, Father, every contrary prayer, Father, that is sent to each one of them, Father, right now in Jesus' name. If there's someone that is sending contrary prayers, Father, prayer against your will, against their life, I break those prayers right now in Jesus' name. 
I just declare, Father, the fire of the Holy Spirit is burning those altars right now. If there's someone in here, Father, that, that they are doing witchcraft on them with altars, with their pictures, with their names. Father, I just ask you that you send your angels of high rank, Father, to remove their pictures, to remove their names from those altars, from the cemeteries, from the places of uh, uh, sorcerers and witches, Father. And I just declare right now, in Jesus' name, those altars to be burned down and destroyed right now, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for your warrior angels, Father, for freedom, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Guys, God bless you. This is just the beginning. I'm going to give you guys really, really good strategies. So come ready for the next session next time, next Wednesday. We are now going to go deep into more theory okay yes can witchcraft paralyze pastors look listen to this i'm gonna share this next week but listen to this witchcraft have effect in you when you have an open portal in your life this is what i always say self-deliverance continuously if there is a portal open in your life the enemy has a legal right and there is an open space for the enemy to so if someone is sending witchcraft your way, and it's not always the case, it can happen that also the Lord allows certain things to teach you some things. So I, I just want to say that it's not everything. It's just that you have an open portal in your life. It could be that sometimes the enemy is a, that the Lord is allowing certain things to maybe to treat you some things, to teach you some 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 things. So that's why it's important to have discernment. Um. <coughs> oh wow, your husband got paralyzed suddenly after mission work. Yeah, that sounds to me like. Thank you, Karen. Also, Karen comes from the occultism. It would be good if, if I can have like an interview in here with her from X Witch to X Witch, so she can also share, share her testimony to you guys and her experience from that side. I think that that would be good. So yeah, um, so I will share that next week. I'm gonna plow on Friday. I'm not gonna pull quizzes tomorrow because um, there's no much that I can do quizzes about my testimony. Oh, what time did I become Christian, guys? <laughs> there's no much on that. So I'm not uh, doing quizzes tomorrow, but on Friday I will upload the prophetic activation um, so you guys can practice. And um, I'm gonna drop in here, guys, the link if you wanna join our private community. Please make sure that you join for prayer, for prophetic activation, so you guys can also make sure that you join if you would like to donate to this ministry you know that all this content is free so i'm going to south america um so you know um i need money <laughs> i'm gonna put it like that i need money to move it's really expensive uh, we, we just pray to god that he's gonna open doors for us because we're leaving everything behind um we're just taking some clothes not even winter clothes because it's hot there so we need to also like buy uh, clothes so we literally live in everything so yes if you want to partner with this ministry donate to us um that's gonna be great because i want to keep giving this content to you guys for free so we can reach more people and people need this kind of teachings um so yeah i hope to see you guys soon if you have any questions um oh yeah i haven't shared guys i'm moving <laughs> I have shared it like three times. The Lord has told me to move to my country of birth, to Colombia. My husband now has agreed with it. Um, he's not Christian, but the Lord is doing something amazing in him that I am amazed. So we are moving in July, the first week of July. So it's really quick, it's really soon. Um, making sure that, uh, make sure please that you keep us in your prayers for how long? God knows. We want to go just for three years because I want to, I'm basically going with the ministry that I'm part of, Rick Nation. So there is no Rick Latin America. So I am the only one that speaks Spanish that has been trained for three years. So the Lord has told me, daughter, I release you to your nation. And I'm like, that's not even my nation. I wasn't raised there. He was like, no, you are released to your nation. You are going. So I'm just obedient. Uh, and just this is a sacrifice for me. I cry every day, guys. I am a crybaby. I'm crying now because this sacrifice hurts. But I'm, I'm, I'm willing to leave everything and do the will of God. Um, so we are going to go on in, in 
in July. We want to move our children, everything that we have in here, leave everything in here, start from zero in Colombia and start doing Greek Latin America, which is expanding the prophetic to Central America, to South America. Start, I need to translate all the prophetic training into Spanish. Start, you know, it's just a lot of things that, um, yes, Elizabeth, you can. And also going to do a teaching on how you protect your husband or your wife. Because something important that, look, um, Elizabeth, that you need to un 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 understand is that you, that you are one flesh now with your husband and with your wife. What happened is that you are one flesh. It doesn't matter if he's not Christian or he has open portals. Because you are one flesh, you have the authority to come against that. So instead of allowing those things that your husband or your wife are sending to you like energies demons all of those things you block that and you release the power of the holy spirit you release the prophetic you release every gift that the holy spirit is giving you we just declare every holy every spirit every gift that you give me father in the spirit i release it to my husband every dream that i have i just declare that he's gonna have heavenly encounter so when you un un understand that your prayer for your partner now changes but i'm gonna also give a strategy of have to pray for my unsafe partner because also that's me that's been my battling of like training um with my husband and for these experiences um no it might be like a, a it might be like an oppression there it doesn't mean that there is open portals it might be something else yes i'm gonna teach that so yeah so i'm moving in in july so please keep us in your prayers this is actually moving it's stressing now imagine to another continent you know south america the whole thing is so what i'm thinking if you are from the uk i'm thinking in doing a holy spirit friday night on site in london probably in may i want to do may and june so if you are in London, I know that Anita, Anna, Alberti, you will come. I know that for sure. So if you're living here, also Ilonka, most, uh, probably she will also come to help us with Holy Spirit Friday night. So if you are here in the UK, um, make sure that you know that you come in and we do a few sessions before I, you know, and release to South America to expand there, whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do. And then for those of you, sorry, that have messaged me, <clears throat> I have a million messages, guys, even emails on band, on Instagram. I don't reply on Instagram anymore because I gave up, <laughs> but I'm trying to catch up on band. So bear with me if you have messaged me or emailed me. I will try and get back to you as soon as I can, guys. Um, I actually need an admin person to help me and just drop in there, just just there in case you want to help me. Um, so, yeah, I'm going, guys. It's 11. It's been a, a, a great night. Let me stop this recording. <clears throat>